Okay, salamu alaikum. You have made it. This is the last of the appendix lectures. This is really now the end of the course. Interesting odds and ends three. And the topic that we would like to tackle here may be something which has crossed your mind. We have said that DNA is made of four bases guanine, cytosine, adenine, and thymine. And when we talked about RNA, we sort of quickly and without explanation said, oh yes, it's just like DNA, except that the thymine is uh, not used in RNA, and instead of thymine, we use a similar base called uracil. And you may have wondered, well, why in the world would DNA use thymine? And RNA use uracil instead. So we will touch upon that in this last um, appendix lecture and thank you for listening. So here's an abbreviated answer from Science Daily that basically uracil is energetically less expensive to produce than thiamine, but we're going to find that the situation is more subtle and more complex than that. DNA is much less error prone by using thiamine than using uracil when it comes to copy itself. Now remember, information flow is such that DNA gets transcribed to messenger RNA, and it is messenger RNA that is read by the ribosomes to make the proteins. And so messenger RNA does not get copied to make a copy of itself. It is not a template to make more messenger RNA, the way DNA is a template to make both more DNA and RNA. And that really is the secret. So let us take a brief look at the structure of cytosine, uracil, and thiamine. So if we first focus on the difference between cytosine and uracil, we can see that cytosine can be turned into uracil by a deamination, by taking off the NH2 group in cytosine uh, at the top of the figure and replacing it with an oxygen. And along with that is breaking of the double bond that binds the nitrogen, but basically deamination of cytosine makes it uracil. And it turns out that this degradation process occurs quite frequently in nature. So cytosine can often degrade into uracil just by sitting there. And if that were to happen, and uracil were a normal component of DNA, DNA would be unable to tell that this has happened because cytosine is normally there and uracil is normally there. But if cytosine happens to degrade into uracil, then the DNA molecule and the surrounding enzymes may think that that uracil was normally supposed to be there. And if that were to happen, then when the DNA gets transcribed, a cytosine-guanine pair would get changed into a stable point mutation of a uracil-adenine pair. Because remember, uracil takes the place of thiamine, and that pairs with adenine. So we would get point mutations in DNA that would be unrecognized. A second issue is if we look at the difference between uracil and thiamine, we see that the thiamine has a methyl group on the number five carbon. And that is the only difference between it and uracil. It turns out that that is very significant because that methyl group is hydrophobic and changes slightly the folding of the uh, double helix in the vicinity of the thiamine. And that is important because uracil is not as selective as thiamine in bonding. It can bond with itself, it can bond with other bases, 
other than adenine. Now, as we said, luckily, RNA does not get transcribed, it just gets translated, but it is not used as a template for making other RNA, by and large. And so, having that 5-methyl uracil, which is another name for thiamine, makes it much more selective and makes it pair only with adenine. So you see that on multiple counts, using thiamine instead of uracil is quite important for the fidelity of DNA replication. So these issues, of course, come from the medical literature, uh, uh, the chemical literature, I should say. I'm not making this stuff up. And here is a paper for your reference. And let us look at this quote, that it is generally accepted that negative discrimination against uracil in DNA is caused by the chemical instability of cytosine. Deamination of cytosine, a rather frequent process that readily occurs under physiological circumstances, gives rise to uracil. That's what we've already seen and talked about. And unless corrected, this mutagenic transition will result in a CG into a U or T a base pair that cytosine guanine would end up getting changed into a uracil adenine base pair type mutation and so it would not be a good idea to have cytosine uh, to have rather uracil be part of dna and in fact when cytosine does degrade into uracil because of this problem of causing a possible stable point mutation, if uracil were a normal part of DNA, that degradation is immediately corrected. So there is an entire suite of enzymes that takes care of excising that uracil out of the DNA because it is recognized as foreign to DNA and that what we should have instead of uracil is thiamine. So when a cytosine gets changed into a uracil by deamination, which does occur physiologically, you can see here that the deaminated cytosine is excised by an enzyme called uracil DNA glycosylase AP um, glycosylase, and then an AP endonuclease uh, goes in and nicks the phosphodiester backbone, and then a 5' prime phosphodiesterase takes that entire group, including the sugar, out, and then the gap is filled in by a DNA polymerase and the backbone is repaired by a ligase. So you see it's a fairly complex process, but it is an important one to keep the integrity and the fidelity of DNA. So if you've ever wondered why DNA uses thiamine and RNA uses uracil, here we go. I hope that this was at least a partial explanation. So just a few odds and ends for the truly hardy and the truly interested. I know that the general public, uh, you know, probably would not be interested in, in these esoteric details, but I hope that some of you are, because once again, you know, even this very minor sort of difference, look at the amount of enzymatic activity that is needed to undertake necessary repairs if cytosine changes into uracil. So um, how would this entire suite of repair enzymes have arisen without planning, without design? And so I hope I have made a convincing case that DNA really bespeaks to an extremely intelligent design. And we as Muslims, of course, believe that that extremely intelligent design is of divine origin. I hope that you have enjoyed the series. 
and I would like to end it by just acknowledging some key references. I've obviously used a lot of references and a lot of papers that I have incorporated into the slides, so you saw them right there. And I have mentioned uh, probably all of these books somewhere along the way, but I did want at the very end to just give special acknowledgement to these three sources that I relied on heavily, and I think that they are truly outstanding books if you are interested in these topics. Signature in the Cell, DNA and the Evidence for Intelligent Design by Stephen Meyer, The Myth of Junk DNA by Jonathan Wells, and Foresight, How the Chemistry of Life Reveals Planning and Purpose by Marcos Eberlin. I highly recommend them. And once again, I thank you for listening. Take care and God bless. Salaamu Alaikum.